These are the frequently asked questions for pre-calculus for the appendix A3. Starting with number 9, it says, an exercise is 9 through 18, find the domain of the algebraic expression. Now, there are two situations that we have to watch out for in the, the current sections that we're dealing with. And the first is, anytime we have division. So anytime that we are dividing, what we have to do is think, okay, what number can't be in the denominator that would make this zero? Whether or not it's something as basic as 1 over x or something like x1 over x minus 2. In this case, x can't equal 0. In this case, x can't equal 2. And that's because that would make our denominator 0. And we cannot divide by 0. Now, division is one of those situations. And another one of those situations um, is going to be whenever we're taking the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, and even root of a number. And that's because we have to keep that positive. So x would need to be greater than or equal to 0. Or in a situation like this, x would have to be greater than or equal to 3 in order for us to stay in the real number system. So when I look at problem number 9, I don't see those situations. This is just a polynomial, and I think, are there any numbers that I cannot square? Any real numbers that I know of that I cannot square? Nope. Are there any real numbers that I know that I can't divide by or multiply by negative 3? Nope. So this is all real numbers. So the domain for any polynomial, which is what we are seeing in this case, is going to be all real numbers. So for number 9, there are no real restriction, restrictions. It's just the domain is all real numbers. Then, interruption there. Um, we're finding the missing numerator or denominator so that the two rational expressions are equal. Really what we're trying to see is what did they multiply the numerator and the denominator by to get that new um, numerator that we see. And to do that, we're going to work backwards. So we're going to factor out an x. And we see that what they did to x minus 4 to get x squared minus 4x is they multiplied it by an x. And whatever we do with a fraction to keep it, keep it equivalent, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom and vice versa. So this had to be multiplied by x, which means that would be an x squared. So this is kind of a, a backwards way of thinking about how we would get what we need. Similar thinking on 24 then would be that we need to factor x squared minus x minus 12. There is no common monomial factor, and 12 is not a perfect square, so this is not a perfect square trinomial. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1, and that will be negative 4 and positive 3. So now look at the original. That was x minus 4, and you can see what they had to multiply by to get that. They had to multiply by x plus 3. And whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So this would give us x squared plus, using FOIL here, outside times outside would be 3x, inside times inside would be 5x for a grand total of 8x, and then last times last is 15. So that would be the new denominator. And again, it's kind of a backwards thinking, so I can see where that was confusing. All right, number 29 says, in exercises 27 to 32, consider the original fraction and its reduced form from the specified example. Explain why the given restriction is needed on the reduced form. So for number 29, they wanted us to look at example 4. And they have there that they don't have any restrictions. So we need to figure out why. That's not the case. Well, it's not the case because right away we can see that the LCD right here is going to be 3x minus 2 and x minus 5. And what we have to do is find those zeros and say x cannot equal 2 thirds and x cannot equal 5. If they do, we will have to divide by 0. Which we can't do because it's undefined. So 
So there's our explanation. Looking back at example four, uh, we've got a problem if x is 2 thirds or x is 5, and the problem is it's going to make the denominator equal to 0. And as I keep looking at the rest of this problem, I realize those, those are the only numbers that I need to worry about with that domain. You know, starting from the very beginning to the end of the problem, um, those are the two numbers that would be issues. I think that was it on that page, All right? Next up, number 45. And in number 45, it just says simplify. That's all it says. So when they say simplify, we really, we should give the restrictions on the domain as well because we are talking about fractions here. And whenever we're talking about fractions, we are supposed to know that there are numbers that would uh, make this an impossible problem because we would be dividing by zero. Anyway, I notice this is just multiplication. So what I'm going to need to do is factor everything. I need to see it in its prime factorization. And I get to the numerator of the second one, and I notice that's x squared minus 1. And that, of course, is a difference of two squares problem. And that's where you have a plus sign and a minus sign between the same two terms. And what that does is it eliminates a middle term. Notice there is no middle x term right here. And then the next thing we would do is we would cancel as much as we can. And I notice that the 1, the, I'm sorry, the 3 and the 9 would reduce to a 1 and a 3. That's called cross-reducing. And then the x minus 1s would cancel right out. And we would have x plus 1 over 3. But again, don't scribble everything out. Just kind of put a line through it. Because eventually you want to come back and you want to say, all right, what are my restrictions on the domain here? And from the beginning, 1 was bad. It continued to be bad as we went through the problem. So x cannot equal 1. That would be uh, a would not be a solution because we cannot uh, divide by 0. Let's see. Next one on your list is 48. You might have to shrink this or slide it a little bit because I made this really, really big. So number 48. 48 is just multiplication again, which means we need to factor everything as much as we possibly can and see what we can cancel. And we look up at this numerator and see that 3 does divide into 18 and 3. But we also have an x that can come out of both of those. So we're going to factor out that common monomial factor of 3x, and that will leave us with 6x minus 1. Now we need the 1 because 3x times negative 1 needs to give us that negative 3x back there at the beginning. Then I'll leave the denominator alone. There's nothing I can do with that. And on the second fraction, there's nothing we can do with that numerator. And then we check 6x minus 1. That's in factored form. It's in its prime factorization because we always look for x squareds in order to see whether or not it's possible that we could um, do any more factoring. Now, Again, be very careful with your canceling, but we see this nice 3x for 3x right there, and a 6x minus 1 right there, and then one of these y's can be taken out. So across the top, I have a 1, a 1, a 12, and a y, and across the bottom, a 1, a 1, and a 1. So the answer to number 48 is just going to be 12y. However, let's go back and look at domain. So our domain for this one, we cannot use 0 for x, we cannot use 0 for y. And then 6x minus 1, again, if you have trouble finding them, just set them equal to 0. You guys are great at these two-steppers, so you get this far and you realize, oh yeah, add 1 and divide by 6. So 1 6 is out for x. Now, let's look and see if anything else happened as we were doing this problem. And there was no new introdu introduction of any other type of denominator for number 48. So those three take care of our restrictions on the domain. Then the next one you had for me is 51. So I'm going to do some scooting around here so that I can get to all of the problems you asked for. All right, so 51. As I look at that one, I notice again 
this is multiplication. And I'm always checking that because I don't want to accidentally multiply when I'm supposed to divide. You know, I, I want to make sure that that's um, the process that I'm, that I'm going through is just multiplication. And I notice this one has a 2 in the front position. Reminder that that means our first terms in each of those parentheses were 1 and 2. And then in the back, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and somehow, through outside times outside plus inside times inside, manage to give us a 9. So we're going to have negative 1 and positive 5, or positive 1 and negative 5. And then again, you do outside times outside plus inside times inside in the hope of finding that positive 9. And 10 and negative, negative um, 1 would do that in this case. So. Outside times outside, check the two greens, that will give you 10. Inside times inside, that will give you negative 1, and 10 plus negative 1 does give you the 9. So that means your first positions are a 2 and a 1, and then your last positions in this order are negative 1, positive 5, and then of course in this case we need to put y's in with those first terms. So 2y squared plus 9y minus 5, make sure you can see everything here, here we go, um, is going to factor into 2y minus 1 times y plus 5. Our denominator is a difference of two squares pattern, and that's going to be our y plus 5 and y minus 5, because y times y gives you y squared, and then last times last will give you that negative 25, with a positive and a negative wiping out those middle terms. Y minus 5, nothing we can do with that. 2Y squared minus Y, pull a Y out of that one. And we'll be left with 2Y minus 1 for our common monomial factor. All right, let's see what we have here. We have a lot of things that we're going to be able to cancel out. 2Y minus 1 is gone. Y minus 5 is gone. Y plus 5 is gone. And we just found an incredible incredibly cool way to write one. I love that, you know, I love all of that. And, and we've got our little y down here at the bottom. So it is one over y, but I just love it when we can do all of that canceling throughout a problem. And uh, like I said, it's like we have our own secret decoder rings in math for different ways to write things. When you look at this, you would never guess that it's going to be 1 over y when you get done. But it's that process that we know that is our secret decoder ring. Now, back to talking about our domain with this one. We cannot have a negative 5 or a positive 5 for y. Those are out. We cannot have a 0 for y. I'm going to move over here. Because if it were in this position, that would make a zero in our denominator. And we cannot have a one-half, because if we solve 2y minus 1 equals zero, we'd add 1 and divide by 2. And then I look at my final answer, and I realize, well, again, we, the zero would be bad there. But we already have that as part of our domain in number 51. So got several restrictions there as we are going through that problem. Next one on your list is 57, and 57 is a uh, complex fraction. And the good news is uh, this is just one fraction divided by another fraction. So with this one, all we have to do is multiply by the reciprocal. I'm not going to bother with the LCD business with this one. Let's just multiply by the reciprocal. 2x squared y over x minus 3 squared times x minus 3 over 8xy. And that's just looking at a problem and realizing, you know, what's the easiest thing to do here? And this, this would be the easiest thing for this problem. On um, the next few that you asked for, I, I definitely will do it the way that we had in class with the new way with the LCDs. Now, let's do some canceling. The 2 goes into the 8 four times. And we have one of these x minus 3's canceling out. We have one of the x's canceling out. 
and our y's are canceling out for number 57. So what do we have left? Well, we have an x. And in the denominator here, we have a 4. And we have an x minus 3. And then, of course, we want to talk about um, our denominators and what we can't use here. So our domain, x cannot be 3. And when we rewrote it, we saw x and y cannot be 0. And then in our final answer, we see that 3 is still going to be a problem. So there we go. Now, the solution manual for the book uh, doesn't always cover all of them. We are always going to cover all of those restrictions from start to finish and make sure that none of those numbers are used. Then, number 61. Now, this one is subtraction. And when we're doing subtraction, we have to have a common denominator. So the first thing we will do is we will factor all of our denominators. And I'm going to change this to adding a negative. You know me. That most common mistake made in mathematics is forgetting to distribute those negatives. So um, now we have an x squared minus 9 in the last fraction, and that is the difference of two squares. So that's x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now I need an LCD. And I have to have everything and to its highest power. So I'm going to need an x. I'm going to need an x plus 3. And I'm going to need an x minus 3. The highest power of any of those is to the first power. So that will be enough. That means my first fraction is missing an x minus 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top to keep that fraction equivalent. My second one is missing the x plus 3 and the x minus 3, which kind of drives me nuts because I keep thinking, you know what, I'm just going to write down x squared minus 9, but I don't want to lose anybody on that step. So, And then this last one just needs an x in the top and the bottom. So my first fraction, simplifying my numerator, will be 3x minus 9 over x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then I would have to distribute a negative 1 through, and this multiplies to x squared minus 9. So this would be plus negative x squared plus 9 all over x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Plus negative 6 times x is negative 6x over x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And now we can go ahead and go across the numerator because all of these have a common denominator. We're going to keep that common denominator. And go ahead and uh, combine like terms across the numerators here. So we have negative x squared. We have a 3x minus 6x, which is a negative 3x. And then we have a negative 9 plus 9, which will give us 0. And then I notice, wait a minute, I can take a negative 3 out of that. Or sorry, negative x, not negative 3. And that will give me x plus 3 all over x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. So then the x is going to cancel out. The x plus 3 is going to cancel out. And I will be left with a negative 1 over x minus 3. And then we have to go back and go after uh, all of our restrictions on the domain. So for our least common denominator, x equaling 0 would be out, and 3 and negative 3. And then what we have to do is go through those steps and see if there was anything new that was going to cause trouble in our domain. And there is not. So 0, 3, and negative 3 would be our restrictions for the domain. Now, the next one on your list is 63, which I think is on this next page. There we go. And with this one, I'm going to use the LCD method that we went over in class. And I'll probably end up over here with it. But my LCD 
I look at y squared, x squared, y squared, and x squared, and I have to take everything into its highest power. So I'm going to have to multiply every term here by x squared, y squared. And that means there's going to be some canceling. And that canceling is what's going to make this just one fraction when we get done. Here, the y squares cancel out, and I have x squared times x, which is x to the third. Here, the x squareds cancel out, and I have minus y to the third. And on the bottom, the y squareds will cancel out, and I will have x squared minus. Here, the x squareds cancel out, minus y squared. So on the top there of 63, uh, we have the difference of two cubes. And on the bottom, we have the difference of two squares. And it's, it's quite possible that something's going to cancel, so we need to give it a try. So difference of two cubes, a is x, b is y, this will be x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared, using that uh, difference of two cubes formula for factoring, over x plus y times x minus y. And you can see that we do have a little piece here that we can cancel. So that's going to be x squared plus xy plus y squared all over x plus y. And then we go back and look for our restrictions as always. And x and y can't be zero. X and y cannot be zero. And when we factored here, we saw that we can't have x and y be the same thing because x minus y um, would give us a zero. So x cannot equal y. This one on the list is number 66. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to go after this our new way, which is to find the LCD and multiply every term by the LCD. So number 66, as we're looking at this problem and we're trying to consider an LCD, you need to remember that those denominators are 1. So we need everything there and to its highest power, which fortunately or unfortunately is uh, two binomials, x plus 5 and x minus 3. So what we're going to have to do is multiply all the terms by x plus 5 and x minus 3, which gives me a little uh, problem as far as space goes. So. Let me rewrite this fraction down here where I have some space. So we have 2 over 1 minus, I'm going to make that a plus a negative just to make this easier. And all of that is over. 2 over 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. All right, so here comes our LCD. x minus 3 times x plus 5. So making sure every term gets that LCD. All right, now we go through and cancel what we can. Unfortunately, nothing is going to cancel here. So we will get two times, and we can go ahead and FOIL the x minus 3 times x plus 5, which will be x squared plus 5x minus 3x, which is plus 2x, and minus 3 times positive 5 will be minus 15. And then in the back, the x plus 5 is going to cancel out. So what we're going to need there is negative 13 times x, which is negative 13x, and negative 13 times 3, which is 39, all over. Now we still have a 2 here, and again, that's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 15 that we're going to distribute there. And here the x minus 3s will drop out, so we will have plus 3 times x, which is 3x, and 3 times 5 which is 15. All right, now time to do some simplifying here. So we have 2 
times x squared, which is 2x squared, 2 times 2, so plus 4x, 2 times negative 15, and that's going to be subtracting 30, minus 13x plus 39, all over 2x squared plus 4x minus 30 plus 3x plus 15. And you see there's repetition here, and, and that just happens with this problem because we had uh, two constants by themselves as, as part of those terms. So our numerator, we have 2x squared plus 4x minus 13x, so minus 9x minus 30 plus 39 will be plus 9, all over our denominator, which is 2x squared plus 4x plus 3x is plus 7x, and then we have a negative 30 plus 15, which will be subtracting 15. All right, so on number 66, the next thing we would think is, um, is there anything we can do here to reduce all of this? So that means we're going to have to factor. So we give it a try and see what's going on here, and we realize if it's going to work for both of these, we're going to use 2x and x, and you could always go through and write your factors down and go from there. But I start thinking about the fact that I have a 9 in the back, and whether or not a 1 and a 9 with this combination of 2 and 1 is going to somehow give me a negative 9 in the back. And that's not looking good. So then I think, well, maybe it's negative 3 and positive 3, or negative 3 and negative 3, actually, since it multiplies to a positive 9. And we give that a try, and we see that will be 2x squared. Outside times outside is minus 6x. Inside times inside is minus 3x. That is a negative 9x. Last times last is plus 9. And you can use that same type of thinking down below for our 2x and our x. We have a negative 15 here. And again, you start thinking about would that 1 and 15 combination work, and that's probably not what it is. It's much more likely that it's going to be a 3 and a 5. So if I put the 5 here, outside times outside will give me 10x, and if I put the negative 3 in the middle, then I'll have 10x minus 3x, which is 7x. Then I notice my 2x minus 3s would cancel out, and I will get x minus 3 over x plus 5. Now, let's talk restrictions on the domain. Our LCD way back up here was x minus 3 and y plus, or x plus 5. So 3 and negative 5 are out. And let's see as, if, it, as we went along, anything new showed its head. And we realize, okay, right here, uh, we're still not seeing it in factored form. But once we were down to this region, we could see that 3 halves would be a bad number. Because 2x minus 3 equaling 0, we would add 3 and divide by 2. So x cannot equal 3 halves. So that would cover all of our restrictions in the domain. Next one on your list was number 69. Let me go back up here. And I think I'm going to have to do some serious erasing. Yep, it is one of the last problems on here. So let me just clear the ink from this page. Here we go. Clear ink from page. Aha. And go through number 69 with you. Problem number 69, when we take a look at it, we realize, hey, the denominators that I see, that's my LCD, and that's just A and B. So for number 69, we're going to multiply each term by AB. So let's see what happens. Over here, the A's will cancel, and we'll have B squared minus, here the b's will cancel and we'll have a squared. In our denominator, the a's will cancel and we'll have b minus, and here the b's will cancel and we'll have a. So, difference of two squares here will give us b plus a times b minus a, and that is all over b minus a, which is good news because that means we can cancel this piece out and get b plus a, which of course we would correctly write as a plus b because one of the important things that we do is uh, 
is worry about alphabetical order um, when we do these problems. Then we need to worry about our restrictions. A cannot be zero because in the beginning that was our part of our LCD. B cannot equal zero. And then down here at the end, A could not equal B. That could not happen. That is why uh, you probably thought you had 69 wrong. The solution manual actually has a different problem. So hopefully when you looked in the back of the book, they, they had uh, A plus B with those restrictions that we had there. But uh, my solution manual sometimes is wrong as we go through there. It's a different problem. So they, they changed one of the problems in the book and didn't change it in the solution manual. Let's look at 71. 71 has a fraction, and it says we are supposed to write it with positive exponents and simplify. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the reciprocal um, for x plus y to the negative 1, because of course negative powers are for reciprocals. And then the next thing I do is uh, figure out how to get that first set of parentheses as one fraction, and that means an LCD. But the LCD just needs to be for that fraction because the addition is not for both of these. The addition is just for what's in these parentheses. So I'm going to use a least common denominator of xy just for the first set of parentheses. So that'll be y over xy plus, and if I put an x on both of those, x over xy times 1 over x plus y. All right, so next step would be we've got a common denominator, so we're going to go ahead and write this as one fraction, x plus y over xy, because again, having that order correct, <coughs> pardon me, makes your problem elegant. Now, I'm multiplying, and if I'm multiplying, I have an x plus y down here and an x plus y up there, which will cancel right out, and I have one over xy. And then we go back and talk restrictions of the domain all the way through the problem. First of all, x and y cannot be 0. Now this is not subtraction, so we don't have to put x cannot equal y in that situation. Still looking at 0 as a troublemaker and 0 as a troublemaker. So for number 71, um, the x and y. Uh, x cannot equal 0, y cannot equal 0. Now, if we get picky about this one, what we would have to do is say, when could that possibly come out to 0? And that would mean what we need to worry about is that one is the opposite of the other. So we really should put that on there if that, that is the case where we have an, an x plus y or an a plus b left in our denominator because we always want to make sure that we are showing all of the situations that could possibly happen um, so that somebody doesn't use a formula that they cannot use. All right, then 73. 73, we would have 1 over x plus 1 over y, given that we had negative powers there. Those are for reciprocals. And then we would need an LCD. And our LCD, in this case, would be just xy again. So this one will need a y on the top and the bottom, and this one will need an x. And we'll have y over xy plus x over xy, which is x plus y over xy. And that is all we can do there. So then we'll go back and talk restrictions on the domain. And we can't use 0 for either one of those. And we can't use 0 as we go through this problem. So our domain is going to be x can't equal 0 and y can't equal 0. And that is finally the end of your list.